All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about Raheem Sterling. The word in the street is that we are very serious about this player. Let's talk about this guy, man. Let's get in on the act. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is about Raheem Sterling, as we said. We're going to talk about a few other players as well. Of course, Nathan AK. I don't know how that rumor is floated around again. And, of course, Romelu Lukaku's situation, which is obviously hot on this situation, and we need to know what is the latest. But we start from here. I'm told that Raheem Sterling would be open to a move to Chelsea and would be open to discuss with Chelsea. He's on holiday waiting to see if Chelsea and Manchester City enter direct contact. This is from Fabrizio Romano. This is great. You know, the player is open to it. Players um, wanting to see what City and uh, Chelsea do. And and there's positive vibes. I'm, I'm hoping that we can do something about it. Obviously, we're going to give you guys my opinion on the player, the situation, transfer fee and whatnot. We're going to get in on it. First, let's go through the news breaking. Chelsea are confident to secure Raheem Sterling. Transfer could be around $35 million. This is actually from De Marzio. 35 million fee floated around is Demartius information, not Nathan G. Singh. Look, this was one of the stumbling blocks. My, I've got no issues with Raheem Sterling. I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, some Chelsea fans, I think uh, they're, they're overdoing it a little bit in regards to Raheem Sterling. He's better than what we have. And I know that's not the greatest barometer to look at if, if a player deserves to come to Chelsea uh, Football Club because he's better than what we have. Because what better than what we have has not really clicked. So uh, from that perspective, yeah, anyone could be better. But look, disregarding that, Raheem Sterling is still a fantastic player. But my issue was last year in his contract, 27 years old, which is fine, could be entering his peak. But then again, he might have peaked already before, could be on the decline because he started so early in his football career. Um and the transfer fee, wages and the transfer fee, transfer fee 35 million. I got really excited. Apparently, that may not be the case. We'll go down the track what Matt Law has to say. But 35 million, that would have been fine business. Some people are saying, why does it matter if it's 35, 65, 60, whatever the case is? I'll tell you why it matters. At 50 to 60 million, <clears throat> you're looking at you're looking at purchasing someone like maybe uh Rafinha. You can get someone like Rafinha at 50 to 60 million, who's a lot younger as well. I'm pretty sure Rafinha is a lot younger. Let me see what. Um, how old is Rafinha? Rafinha age twenty five. He's a couple of years younger, um, you know, which is which is uh, definitely um, you know, in terms of Raheem Sterling twenty seven. I believe he's going to be twenty eight next next year. So from that perspective, look, the the transfer fee does matter. At sixty to fifty to sixty million, you can possibly get Rafinha, who's a couple of years younger. His wages are probably going to be le a lot lesser than than Raheem Sterling, and there could be an upsell uh, upside to Rafinha as well. If you wanted to let go of him later on when he's 27, 28, you could possibly get a good fee. Whereas Sterling, a couple of seasons in at 29, does he have a upside uh, to him? Probably not. So from that perspective, the fee does matter. At 35 million, sure, Raheem Sterling makes sense. At 50, 60 million, I'm not quite certain if it makes sense. So, yes, price does matter into what you bring in and whatnot. Of course, player quality, Sterling, Rafinha, probably, probably similar-ish, I say, in terms of quality. Now, let's go further into it. Raheem Sterling, Chelsea top, <clears throat> top target, as reported last Tuesday. Man City want around 55 to 60 million approach for 25 million and add-ons turned down. Chelsea will be back with new bids soon as Manchester City are open to let him go. Man City, 100 million to 110 million from Gabriel Jesus and Sterling. Look, um, yeah, this is why I guess Man City is holding on Arsenal as well, holding up Arsenal in regards to Gabriel Jesus. 100 to 110 million from Gabriel Jesus and Sterling. I think they won about what 50 million or 55 million for Jesus. So do they want about the same amount for Sterling? Would you take Sterling for 50 million? I feel like man, just go out there and see if you can try and secure Rafinha in that case. Um, do you know what I mean? Like as I keep saying, he's a bit he's a couple of years younger. So look, anywhere between 35 to 40 million. And we have to understand it is the last G in his contract and he wants to leave. So there could be 
a, a, a point of advantage for us that Raheem Sterling is not willing to stick around. And I think Man City, in, in their own interest, wants to let him go being on his final uh, year in his contract, or else he's going to go on a free. So I hope we can do something around 35 to 40 million. That makes a lot more sense to me. Um, sources Manchester City will still demand 50 to 60 million for Chelsea tie to Raheem Sterling despite having just one year left on his contract. The other thing that I want to mention as well in regards to Raheem Sterling is that he he wants to come back to London apparently. Um, I've questioned the motivation and the motivation it seems to be a bit sentimental in the sense that he wants to come back to London because he's um, his mother is there, he wants to be closer to his mother. He's apparently a London boy as well, and um. Yeah, and this is one reason why he wants to come back. The other reason is obviously World Cup season wants to ensure that there is, you know, he gets enough minutes regularly so he's in the top condition for the World Cup. So we, we should be able to use all of that as a, as, a, as, a, as an advantage to say, okay, we're willing to give you all that, but you need to probably make some sacrifice. Because when you look at it in the Premier League point of view, if he wants to move to London, who else could he move to? I highly doubt he'd go to Spurs at the moment. Um I suppose are looking elsewhere. Arsenal, I don't think, is an option for him. And there aren't any other London teams that are capable of, you know, doing what we can do, I suppose. And, and we are the best London team. Chelsea Football Club are the best London team. Whether you like it or not, they're definitely the best London team. In in the Premier League, nowhere else would he go. Would he go to Liverpool? I, he's done that. I don't think Liverpool's interest, interested as well. And he wouldn't go anywhere else. So we need to use all this as an advantage and say look Raheem we'll do what you want us to do in order to bring you to London and, and fulfill your sentimental side of things um, but at the same time I don't think we can give you that level of wages I think he, he may demand upwards of around 300k or somewhere around 250 to 300k so we need to probably look into that as well um, and then you know, transfer fee has to be a lot less so 50 to 60 million as, as said, touted he from Matt Law for me you can go out there and get Rafinha in that case. So the, the fee does matter, in my opinion. Nonetheless, the player is a good player. I'll have no issues for him joining uh, us, but I would want other inclusions as well. I still want us to get Dembele. I don't want it to be a situation where it's been floating around that apparently we're worried about Dembele's injury you know, history, and that's where we're going for Raheem Sterling. I hope that's not the case. I hope it's the case where we're letting go of Romelu Lukaku and we're looking to have a fluid front three, and that's why we're going for Raheem Sterling. I don't want it, I don't want us to deter away from Dembele. Chelsea believe a fairer price for Raheem Sterling would be closer to 35 million, which Bayern Munich could end up paying for Liverpool forward Sadio Mane. This this is a fantastic point. Bayern Munich is getting Sadio Mane for 35 million, and Sadio Mane is a far better player than Raheem Sterling. Let's be honest. And I know English tax kicks in with Raheem Sterling. I completely understand, but we cannot be, you know, disrespecting Sadio Mane's value uh, and have Raheem Sterling be paid somewhere around 50 to 60 million, even with the English tax. So I think this is a fantastic point where it needs to be somewhat reasonably closer. It is understood that Raheem Sterling has been talking to people about what life is like at Chelsea and what Tuchel is like as a coach. Great. On Chelsea source, one Chelsea source says that the only stumbling block to a deal being done is the size of the fee. Sterling is available for a cut price, uh, which once again is fantastic that there are these sort of conversations apparently happening. Um, last two seasons, 2021-2022, big, se uh, big chances uh, created in the league. Mason Mount, 23 big chances created. Hakim Ziyech, 15. See, this is the thing. Hakim Ziyech's stats should be a lot better in terms of assists. And that, too, from playing so much far lesser minutes than Mason Mount. No, nothing taken away from Mason Mount. This is fantastic. Apparently, there's a lot of um, set pieces there as well. A few open plays, no problems. I've got no issues. Mason Mount's doing great. But Hakim Ziyech... With amount that such less minutes than Mason Mann and still having 15 uh, big chances created, second apparently Raheem Sterling 14, um, so which is great. Um, look, I don't picture Raheem Sterling as a creator; I picture him more as a goal scorer. But he can chip in with the with the creative side of things. Timo Werner 10, Hudson Odoi 7, Christian Pulisic 6, Kai Havertz 4. I would love to see Kai Havertz improve that. Okay. Let me know how you guys feel about Raheem Sterling. Are you warming up to this? I, I've got no issues with it. I think it only upgrades us. Um, but we do need to be concerned about the price, transfer fee, and the wages. I mean, we have to compromise. Raheem Sterling has to compromise, in my opinion. 
Let's talk about this uh, Romelu Lukaku situation now, the latest on it. Inter Milan are on the verge of signing Romelu Lukaku, which will prompt Chelsea into focusing on incoming transfer business, including which attacking players to make firm bids for Raheem Sterling interest. Um, so, look, Matt Law is trying to say that as soon as Lukaku is gone, we're going to go in hard for Raheem Sterling, as I keep saying. If, if Raheem Sterling is the replacement for Lukaku, no problems, but we shouldn't deter away from Dembele. I hope we still get Osman Dembele. Very, very important. And the Lukaku situation is coming to an end very, very soon. The nightmare is ending. More on Romelu Lukaku deal. Talks are at final stages as reported today. As Chelsea told Inter, they are already, they're ready to accept the following conditions. 10 million loan fee plus add-ons. Inter just waiting for owners to give the final green light as per Matteo Bazzaghi. Look, the word is apparently that Romelu Lukaku is going to take a massive wage cut. Inter Milan will cover all the wages, which is brilliant. 325k per week, that's a lot of money that we can save. Plus, on top of that, if we can get 10 million loan fee, brilliant. Brilliant case for us, and I hope Inter agrees on that. They're apparently <clears throat> getting closer to that particular mark, uh, and I hope they get closer. But I want to know, is there a buy option? Hopefully there is a buy option because I don't want this player to come back. Um, saving on his wages is is massive. It's a massive, massive financial win for us. I know we've already paid a lot of money to Inter Milan. Uh, I know we've paid a lot of money to Romelu Lukaku in terms of wages last season. But if we can save for the next four seasons and not pay those levels of wages to Romelu Lukaku and get some money in terms of loan fee and hopefully we get a buy option where we can recoup some more money maybe we can start thinking about cutting down that loss that monumental loss that we're going to have with Romelu Lukaku so let's see what happens there Chelsea sent Inter Milan their demands for Romelu Lukaku today 10 million plus add-ons Inter are ready to bridge the gap and now only need a yes from the club president Steven Zhang to authorize the deal this is fantastic hopefully it's moving quick Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on here? Seriously, what is going on here? Tuchel is a fan of Nathan Ake. Chelsea are interested in re-signing him. It's a situation to keep an eye on. Thomas Tuchel seems to be a fan of everyone. Like He's a fan of AK. He's a fan of Emerson. He's a fan of Declan Rice. He's a fan of Vardiol. He's a fan of everyone. Stop being a fan. Do you know what I mean? Like, and how do these journalists know whether he's a fan or not do they really got the hey are you a fan of this player or thomas suku picks up the phone and calls up these journalists and go hey i'm a fan of nathan Ake. come on man how do, like there's a limit to some of these you know news that's coming through certain in the nose and publications i just find it so so strange look for me this player we've let him go we've let him go a while back why are we interested Again, like we shouldn't even be worried about this. I know he can play LCB. I completely get it. But let's look in the market to get someone like Koulibaly. Let's look in the market to get someone like, um, you know, Kim Pembe. We've been uh, interested with. We've been interested with Delict. We've been interested with many other LCBs out there. Why all of a sudden Nathan Ak? I mean, he barely played. For Manchester City and he barely played for us. We loaned him, <clears throat> we loaned him out to Bournemouth. So and then Bournemouth sold him. Um <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Nathan AK. I'm not completely sold. Some Chelsea fans are a bit excited that he can, you know, he's he's defensively he's good, aerially he's good, he's a goal threat, but surely we can do better than Nathan AK. Come on, surely, surely, surely. Exclusive, uh, exclusive. Chelsea have their doubts over Osman Dembele's injury record, and the current feeling is they are more interested in Sterling. As we um, talked about that, I hope that's not the case. I really hope we go for um, uh, Dembele. Marina is reg in regular contact with Kunde's camp. Uh, this comes from Nathan J. Singh. Look, uh, I've got no idea where we sit at the moment with Kunde. I hope we get Kunde. We need a right side at CB. We need defenders. Bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps us up with today's news. Everything is pretty much about Raheem Sterling. Let me know how you feel about the whole scenario in regards to Sterling. Let me know how you feel about Romelu Lukaku as well, moving towards Inter Milan, very very close with the price. And um, yeah, Nathan Ak, talk to me about Nathan Ak. Would love to know. How you feel about Nathan Ake? I don't see why we're going for this particular player. Uh, yet another City player. We are raiding City. Um, but I don't think that's a player for us. Anyway, 
Let me know how you feel about all of these things that we brought up. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys tomorrow for another live. Until next time. See ya.